Hi everyone, I'm live on Twitch and this is just a recording for the YouTube channel. We're here, we're going to be doing this year's Senior Maths Challenge, uh, which was sat three days ago. <clears throat> I've been a bit ill, been a bit busy with stuff, so I will, um, uh, I've been a bit slow at getting this out, but I'm going to give this a go and I've had a brief look at the last few questions and they look... Well, there's a few I don't really know where to start. I've had a bit of a ponder, um, but I haven't had a go at any of them yet. Um, but the, if you don't know, the Senior Maths Challenge is sat in UK schools. It is sat uh, for A-level students, but no knowledge of A-level is needed to uh, participate in these. The idea being we're going to have 25 increasingly difficult multiple choice questions, and we start with 25 marks. Uh, if we don't answer a question, we gain no marks, but obviously we start with those 25. For everyone we get right, we get four marks, and for everyone we get wrong, we lose a mark. So we are going to not be guessing. Um, and the way that we will probably only guessing if we get it down to definitely one of two answers, and then it's profitable to guess. Um, the questions this paper are designed to challenge us, so we are going to be thinking, not outside the box, but uh, trying all the approaches in our maths toolbox to try and get an answer. And the way I'm going to do it is... Um, I'm going to work out what I think the answer is and then look at the five answers and see if my answer is there. Because if it isn't, I've gone wrong, definitely. But I don't want to be influenced by any of the answers that are there unless the question is a, a bit of a weird one where it looks at, to say which one is wrong or which one is right or something. So we're going to give this a go. However, often when I do these, I have the answers. So I'll do it and then I'll mark it at the end. Um, this one, we do not have the answers yet because it was sat this week. So what I've got is I've got another set of answers from a math teacher friend of mine who had a go in his own time. And he said the last four questions took him an hour. Um, now, we've only got an hour and a half to the whole thing. So I'm going to try and stick to within an hour and a half time limit. Um, but bear that in mind. And at the end, what we're going to do is I'm going to mark it as the best of ability. If Tim and I both agree, we're going to assume we're right. If we disagree, I'll, I'll tell you what both our answers are. So if you've sat this this week, um, and you want to know how you've done, take our answers with a pinch of salt if we disagree, because uh, one or both of us might be wrong in that case. But we're going to go in and do the best we can. The first 15 questions are the bread and butter questions, where you're going to pick up most of your marks, and then I think I'm going to start struggling after that, but we will see. When expression, all of that is simplified, which of the following is obtained? So we're going to get, so it's going to change to a blue pen. So we're going to get 3, 8, 15, and uh, 24. And these are going to have factors. So what we can do is start cancelling out some factors. So, for example, 3 is there. 8 is uh, 2 fours, 15 is 3 fives. 24 is 4 sixths. So, so I think this 5 only cancels out with 1 uh, there's only one 5 in the numerator and it's already gone there. So this 5 is left over. I think everything else cancels out. So I think you're left with one fifth. What's the smallest prime? Which is a sum of five different primes. Five different primes added together. So the smallest five primes you can add would be 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11. But you, if you add a 2, your answer will be even. So what we need to do is add up five odd primes and see what we get. So let's try adding up the five smallest odd primes. That's three plus five plus seven plus 11 plus 13 and see what we get from that. If we add that, it's 20, 31, 36. We get 39. So I can do 39 with five primes and it's the smallest number on my list. So I believe that's quite an easy one there. The figure shows a regular hexagon. How many parallelograms are there in the figure? So a parallelogram has four uh, faces and so one so one equilateral triangle does not get a parallelogram. Two would. And three wouldn't because you'd have a face for every triangle you add on for every parallel every equal triangle you add on you're adding one face to your answer so how many ways are there with two triangles you've got these two these two these two these two these two and these two i think there's six ways with 
two triangles and what we've got to do is make sure we can't do it with any more than two. Can we get a parallelogram with more than two? Three gets you a pentagon, so that doesn't work. Four gets you a hexagon. What you can't have is ones that are not touching because you'll have too many edges there. You'll have six edges there. Five isn't a pair and six. I think it's just I think it's just six. It's all the pairs of two triangles together. The diagram shows two symmetrically placed squares with side lengths of two and five. So that's two, that's five. Symmetrical place is a weird phrase, but I imagine that means that the centre one, is, the one in the middle, is shares the same centre as the one uh, around the edge. Or is the ratio of the area of the small square to that of the shaded region? Well, the area of the small square is 4. The area of the large one would be 25. So what we need to do is work out the area of the shaded region. Now, the area of the shaded region is going to be the area of this, the triangle. So the triangle that it forms with half of the large square. So the large square has got an area of 25. The triangle has got an area of 2. And you're taking off this bit here to get the shaded area. So to get this area here, it's going to be half of the square, the overall square, take away this half of this square. So it's going to be half of that will be 2. So it would be 25 over 2, take 2, or 10.5 if we're doing decimals. So the area of the shaded one is 10.5. The area of the small square is 4. And so the ratios of those areas is 4 to 10.5, which is going to be 8 to 21, which is one of our options there. What is the value of 1, 1 over 1.01 .01 plus 1 over 1.1 .1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 11 plus 1 over 101. Hmm. Hum, hum, hum. Well, to try and make the denominators all the same would be difficult. I wonder if we can add some of these together. So that's, so that's one. These two are incredibly small, so that's going to be 1 11th is like 0 0.90909, 0 I think. And 1 over 11, 1 over 1.1. 1 .1. Oh, hang on, hang on a minute. We can combine these together. Aha. Uh -huh. So my think, my my guess is the answer will have three digits. Um, because I think these two here can, can be combined together. And that's going to be 10 over 11 plus 1 over 11. It's going to be 3. Ah, oh, so maybe I'm wrong. And then this one, and the first one and the last one can be 100 over 101. Plus 1 over 101 gets you 1 as well. Gets you 1. So my 3 was presumptuous. Actually, the final answer is going to be that, because you can add the fractions at the end together to get one, the fractions uh, second and fourth to get one, and then the one in the middle is one, so it's just going to be three. Mm. What is the value of 4 to the power 800 over 8 to the power 400? Now, I've been teaching uh, again, so I've been teaching at sixth form, and some of my students sat this test, and... If they get this one wrong, I'll be annoyed because we've done a lot of this. What we want to be doing here is to make the bases the same. So we can make 4 and 8 into the same base. Now, you can make 4 into an 8 by doing fractional powers or 8 into a 4 by doing fractional powers. For example, 8 to the power 2 thirds is 4. But what we're going to do is change them both into 2. So we're going to say this is 2 squared to the power 400, 800, sorry, over 2 cubed to the power of 400, and then we can just multiply the powers, so that's going to be 2 to the 1600 
over 2 to the 1200 and then we need to subtract the powers because we're dividing so that's going to be 2 to the 400 which is that option there. I would hope that my students that sat this would get that right so if you did well done. In 2021 a first class postage stamp cost 85 pence and a second class postage stamp cost 66 pence. In order to spend an exact number of pounds and to buy at least one of each type, what's the smallest total number of stamps that should be purchased? So, uh, the annoying thing with this is I think I've just spotted an answer, I'll have to check it works, but basically 85p is one of them, you need one of them and one of them. Hi Laprass, this is if you stay in, so I've got someone watching on Twitch, if you stay in Laprass, some of the ones at the end are very difficult, so uh, if you're interested I can send you a link to the hard ones and you can pre-look at them by the time I get there if you want, so let me know if you want to do that. But anyway, so um, because I need a whole number of pounds, one way to do it is to do 285s because that gets a, that gets no units and four and 566s because 566s get you no, no units as well. So I think if we did this, that's seven. So I think if this gets us a whole number of pounds, seven works. All right, no worries, that'd be fine. So this is going to be one pound seventy, and then this is going to be three pounds thirty. And 170 or 330 is five pounds. So I know seven works. What we need to do is show that we can't do it in five or two. Well, we definitely can't do it in two. Two is not possible because two, you have to have one of each, and that would be 85p plus 66p. So to do it in five, I could have, I'm just looking at the units. I could, I need to have one five and one six. Is there any way to get more fives and sixes to get, yeah, so, if I just have fives, I, I won't get a zero. If I just have sixes, I might, if I get 12 plus 5, 17, doesn't work. 22, yeah, so 18 plus 5 is 23. Yeah, that doesn't work. And there's no other digit, yeah. So I don't think I can do five either. So I think seven works. Seven is a way of doing it. So we will take that. In the diagram, the outer hexagon is regular, so regular just means all sides and angles are the same, and has an area of 216. What is the shaded area? The shaded areas are also what looks to be a regular hexagon, and I think the way this works is that the hexagon can be broken up into equilateral triangles, so I think those triangles are the same as these triangles here. So that's, already we know it's going to be less than a half because with the, oh, and this, if you just imagine this one here, this triangle can be split down here and you can twist this one around to make another equilateral triangle. So I think this has the same area as all the other equilateral triangles in there. So I think you've got six of those as well. So in total, you've got six of those, which are equal to the six white equilateral triangles, which are equal to the six in the hexagon. So I think the hexagon is going to be a third of the overall shape. And a third of 216 is 72. So what we've done is broken it into equal bits and we found that effectively the other way to think about it is there are 18 equal space bits there and you want six of them, six eighteenths is a third. A light nanosecond is a distance that a photon can travel at the speed of light in one billionth of a second. Oh, I'll have to read that again. A light nanosecond is a distance that a photon can travel at the speed of light in one billionth of a second. Okay. So, so, so this is a speed. All right. So we need to, how far is a light nanosecond? So a light nanosecond is the distance. 
So distance equals speed over time. Distance equals speed times time. Yeah. So the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8, 3 times 10 to the 8. And we're going to multiply that by 1 billionth of a second. 1 billionth of a second is 1 times 10 to the negative. Oh dear. So that's a tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth. Uh, ten thousandth of a second, a hundred thousandth of a second, a millionth of a second, a billionth of a second. So I think that's the case. So it's a, a tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth, ten thousandth, hundred thousandth, millionth, and then there's three more to get to a billion. So I think we've got that many zeros. So it's going to be one, uh, it's going to be ten to the negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to the negative nine. So if we multiply these together, we get 3 times 10 to the negative 1, which is 0 0.3. Uh, and the units, because the speed is in metres per second, that's going to be 0 0.3 metres. So it's going to be 30 centimetres. Right. What is the value of x in this equation? 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared. over 3 plus 2x plus, am I just going to solve this equation? I mean, one way to do it, you could just substitute in the values, that's one way. Let's, let's try and solve it. So we've got 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared equals 3 lots of 3 plus 2x plus x squared. And we're going to get 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared equals 9 plus 6x plus 3x squared. So the x squares are going to cancel out. You're going to get negative 8 equals 4x or negative 2 equals x. My initial reaction to that was that you're going to get two solutions, but you're not because it just things work out. Right. In the number there, in the number triangle shown, each disc is to be filled with a positive integer. Integer just means whole number. Each disc in the top or middle row contains the number, which is the product of the two numbers immediately below it. What is the value of n? So it's like a product pyramid. The two beneath 2022, so this one and this one, will multiply to get 2022. So that would be 2 times 1,011 is one possibility, but there are going to be other possibilities, aren't there? Oh, is 1,011 prime? No, it divides by 3. Oh, oh, this is nice. So they don't show any factors at all. So that would have to be 2 times 1 and 1 times 1,011. So let's just try doing another one. So 2,022 we know divides by 3. So if we did this again, my guess is you're going to get 1 again. So that divides by 3. That would be 3 lots of um, 600 and something. Uh, 26, 22, 7, 6, 7, 4. And 6, 7, 4, again, if you just did your prime factor, 6, 7, 4, just double checking this, is going to be two lots of uh, 338. And that might be prime. It's not 11, it's not. So going to seven, four, four. No, it doesn't go into seven. Yeah, but the problem is that it doesn't have a factor of three. So this doesn't have a factor of three, which means there's nothing in common with three and six, seven, four. 
So I think again you get that. So whatever you split your first one into, they'll have no common factors. So I think it's just one. Oh, that's quite nice. What is the sum of the digits of the integer, which is equal to that squared, take that squared, 6 million, 6 million. My first thought is a difference of two squares, because that is a square, and take a square. So let's do that, 6, 6, 6. And we're looking for the sum of the digits of the answer. How many are there? Seven of them. Oops, plus 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. times 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, take 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. And that gets us, because um, that's just a difference of two squares, that just gets us, uh, that gets us 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, times 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. And multiplying by uh, this is the same as multiplying by... 10 million taking off one so we're going to get 10 million of this take off one of this the so 10 million of that is going to be three 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 so that gets us 10 million of those and we're going to subtract threes And then if you subtract this away, you're going to get a 7, a 6, a 6, a 6, a 6, a 6, a 6, a 2, and then some 3s. I think there must be an elegant way of doing this, because I've written 3 a lot there. So we're going to get 6, a 20, 36, a 56, 63. So we get, I get an answer that's there. I think I've done that right. Mm. All right. It's starting to get tricky now. Three rugs. That's basically how you're doing it. Yeah. I'm not sure that I'm, it feels like it feels like on this sort of question, there's usually an elegant way of doing it. If they wanted you to do it that way, they surely wouldn't give you so many digits because it's just a faff to write it all out. They could have just done the same with six, 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 take three, 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 three. You didn't write, yeah, you just worked out the subtraction in your head, that's fine. Three rugs of a combined area of 90 metres squared. When they are laid down to cover completely a floor of area 60, the area which is covered by exactly two layers of rug is 12. Hmm. The combined area of 90, when they're laid down to cover completely a floor of area 60, the area which covered by exactly two layers of rug is 12. So I think if we think of these rugs as, let's just pick some values for 90. Um. So I, so I think, let's have a think of this, I think, the way I'm going to do this is a Venn diagram, I'm going to say that's rug one, that's rug two, and that's rug three, and this bit plus this bit plus this bit is, is 12, the, the area covered by two rugs. And so the remaining rugs, these could be rugs, they could be circular rugs, let's say they're circular rugs and effectively the total of the areas of these three rugs is 90. The shaded area is 12, so what you've got is this value in the centre, which is what we want, plus the three white spaces plus 12 gets us 90. So this is... The shaded areas, is, I mean, you might not have any overlap between two of the rugs, you see. Um, I'm trying to think of how to form this in my head. So this 
let's, I mean, can we just give, could we give 20, 30 and 40 as our areas and just kind of make some rooms at work? So we'll call this one 20, call this one 30 and call this one 40. So what we've got with the 20 is you've got an overlap with the 30 and 40 to some extent and the overlaps So we, uh, so we know that 20 minus the overlaps plus 30 minus the overlaps plus 40 minus the overlaps is 90. No, it's 60. Hmm. I might just have to start guessing some numbers. I don't like what's going on. So let's pick some numbers. So let's say that that's 10. That's, I'm going to pick a different color pen. These, these are guesses. So we're going to say 10. Let's say four. Let's say four. Let's do three fours for the overlaps. Four. And then once you pick a number in the 30, the rest will be fixed. So let's pick a number of um, uh, four, eight. Let's pick a number of 10 for the 30. So, so far you've got You need the blue numbers add up to 60. So 10, 20, 32. And then you need to add up to 60. And you've got 40. Another 32, so we can have an overlap of, oh, I don't like this. If we put 2 and 30, does that add up to 60? It doesn't, so that doesn't work. We could put 6 and uh, 26. Does that work? 14. Does that add up to 60? Uh 30, 46, 52, no, that's too many, so we could have 9, which gets us 23, 20, I'm going to come back to this one, I don't think I'm doing it elegantly, I think, I'm just guessing now, aren't I? I think there's an easy way of doing this. If two layers of rug is 12, which means you're taking off 12 of these. So let's think about it that way. So two layers of rug means you're counting from the 90, you're counting 12 twice. So we're going to take off 12 from 90. So we've got to get eight, uh, 78. So we're counting that twice. So we've got 78 left, but we need to get that down to 60. So I think we need 18 to get down to 60. But that needs to, I think it's 9. I think it's 9. I think the 18 needs to go down, which means you need to count 9 three times. 9 plus a 9 plus a 9. Yeah, I think it's 9. I, without doing a diagram, that's pretty poor. I think it's 9 for the basic reason that You've got some rugs that cover twice. So all the rugs that cover twice is this 12. So there's 12 meters squared total. That means 12 meters squared of the bottom rug and 12 meters squared of the top rug that's been counted twice in the 60 because although it's been double layered up, the 60 will only count it once. And that reduces you to 78 of the 90, but you need some overlap three times. So you've got 18 extra bits of rug that you need to triple up and it will only count once so we want 18 to be two-thirds of the double up effectively the triple up so I think it's nine I haven't explained that well at all my Venn diagram failed uh, the diagram shows a square if we say the triple in section is the area X and then the three outside white parts total to Y 
Okay, so... Essentially the same reasoning. So the press has said... The triple intersection, so three times is an X and two times is a Y. We know that X plus Y plus 12 is 60. And separately, X plus Yeah, you need X times three plus 12 times 2 plus y to equal 90 and then you could solve those simultaneously and you get uh, 9 I think for whichever way around x and y is yeah I was doing that without algebra so apologies his, his, his way is slightly more elegant but yeah the diagram shows a square KLMN second square is inscribed in it twisted and uh, oh, P divides, well, God, there's so many letters. P divides the side KL in the ratio 1 to 2. So I'm just going to write that down now. P divides KL in the ratio 1 to 2. With T dividing P, PQ in the ratio 1 to 2. Oh, so that's the ratio 1 to 2 as well. And this, because of the square and the symmetry, this will be the case all the way around. So the little triangles are the ratio 1 to 2. What fraction of the area is shaded? So you could say, you could say you've got one of these triangles down here, that would be 1. So the, the Pythagoras would be, PQ would be root 5. That's not nice. Let's make the original values 3 times larger. So if they split in the ratio 1 to 2, we can suppose they also split in the ratio 3 to 6. And then... If we've made them three times larger, we should be able to split PQ into three as well. So six squared plus three squared is root 45, which is three root five. So PQ is three root five, which we can split into a two root five and a root five. And then that becomes a root five as well. And two root five times root five Pythagoras is going to get you uh, five... 20, 25, 5, so that's going to be 5 if we start with 6 and 3. So the outside square would be 9 squared for 81, and the inside one is going to be 5 squared for 25. And the ratio, or what fraction of the area shaded, it's going to be 25 over 81, which is our first one there. Yeah, so that was one of those ones where you just pick, uh, because you can scale it up, you pick a number that makes the maths easier. We've got one more question for the first 15, and then they get uh, much tougher, I think, but we will see. So these are the ones, again, if you're doing this and you're in year 12, these are the ones you should be focusing on. You should be getting, trying to get the majority of your marks from the first 15, and then try, maybe, answer one or two questions after that. The hare and the tortoise had a race over 100 metres, in which they both maintain constant speeds. When the hare reached the finish line, it was 75 metres in front of the tortoise. The hare immediately turned round and ran back towards the start line. All right, I'm going to need to do this. So we've got the start line beep, and the finish line, and we know it's 100 metres. And when the hare finished, the tortoise is 75 metres, so 25 metres. So that's the tortoise and the hare at the, that point. So we know that the hare runs four times faster. So the speeds, whatever they are, are a ratio of four to one. So if the tortoise keeps going that way and the hare turns around, they're going to split the remaining distance in the ratio four to one. So how far from the finish line did the hare and tortoise meet? They're going to meet about here. And that's going to be one fifth of the remaining distance. And that's going to be four fifths. Because the tortoise of this remaining distance, which happens to be 75 metres, but we don't need to know it necessarily. The tortoise is going to move one-fifth of it in the speed that the hare moves four-fifths of it. So the remaining distance is 
75, one fifth of that is 15, so that, that should be 40. So if we do four fifths of 75, does that get a 60? It does. So I think they meet at 40 meters, which is 60 meters from the finish line. All right. So we're on to the tough ones now. So far, we haven't got to a sticking point, but um, I'm sure we will at some point. Uh, we've had just over half an hour, so we've got an hour left to get 10 questions. And Tim said he spent an hour on the last four, so that's not good. There is one question I've already seen because I talked about it with a student, so I should be fast at that one. But other than that, which diagram could be the sketch of the curve root x plus root y is 1? So I think I know this anyway. However, when you get a question like this, um, where it's looking for which diagram could be, you've got no like points to kind of you know focus in on. So what you need to do is cross off ones it can't be. So it can't be this one because when y is 1, it needs to be there. And when x is 1, it needs to be there. And it can't be this one because that's just the line y equals 1 take x or y plus x is 1. And if you root them, there's no way you'll get a linear line. So it's going to be one of the other three, and it can't be that one because it needs to be symmetrical. So I knew it was B to start with, and the reason it's not A is because A is the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, and the reason for that being is, so I know it's B, is that at the point where x equals y, um, when you square root decimals, you actually start to get larger answers. So, for example, the square root of uh, 0.36 is 0.6. But when you square them, you'll get smaller answers. So here, the point where x and y is the same needs to be larger than half, because when you square it, you get uh, less than a half when you square a half, so you need it to be larger than half, so when you square it, you get a half. So it's going to be this one here, and uh, it's because when y is almost 1, x can be quite small and added on. So I think it's just one of those ones I know, but you can just start to eliminate, eliminate things out. But basically here, when x equals y, you need something that when you square root it, so basically that's going to be root of 0.25, plus root of 0.25 equals 1, because root of 0.25 is 0.5 and 0.5. Yeah, so you need x and y to be small when they're the same. And when you square root them, you get x plus y equals a half, which will be on that line, to get them to 1, if that makes sense. We've got a clover of some sort-ish. The shape shown is made by removing four equilateral triangles with side length 1 from an octagon, a regular octagon with side length 1. What's the area of the shape? Oh my god, so many roots. So we're removing this from an octagon, so I think we're just going to do the usual when you've got a shape that's awkward, work out the whole shape and take off the bits. So we're going to work out the area of a triangle and subtract it from the four of those from the area of the octagon. So the area of the triangle is going to be uh, 1 times 1 times sine 60, just using half a b sine c. Thank you, half times 1 times 1 times sine 60. And a half of sine 60, sine 60 is root 3 over 2, a half of that is root 3 over 4. And four of those, so four triangles, it's going to be 4 times that, it's going to be root 3. So they all have a root 3 taken off the area of the octagon, and the easiest way I know for working out the area of a, thing, a regular shape is to split it into bits like that. There's going to be eight of those. Eight of those will make your octagon, and because it's an octagon, that's going to be 45, that angle there. So the octagon, octagon, is going to be eight lots of the area of this triangle, and the area of that triangle is uh, uh, 
there that triangle is, I don't know, the diagonal of the octagon. I know that this is 1. Hmm. Well, I'm going to get some root twos, and I, this is where I'm looking at the answers for inspiration. I would usually do eight lots of this triangle, but I don't know the diagonal of a regular octagon. The other way, maybe you could do, you could work out a square, could I work out that side? Well, that's going to be 60. Interior angle of octagon, is it 135? So that's 45. Which gets, gets me 1, so that's going to be root 2. over 2, and root 2 over 2, is that right? I'll just do some Pythagoras. 1, it's going to be x squared plus x squared equals 1 squared, so it's going to be 2x squared equals 1 squared, x squared equals a half, x is the square root of a half, which is root 2 over 2. So this is going to be, the area of the square is going to be root 2 over 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 plus 1 squared is going to be root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 is just root 2. Root 2 plus 1 squared is going to be 2 plus 1 plus 2 root 2. It's going to be 3 plus 2 root 2 is the area of the square. Take away that. It's going to be I've done something wrong. Oh, I've got to take away the four triangles here. The area of that triangle is going to be root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2 divided by 2, which is going to be a quarter, and 4 quarters is 1, so that's going to be, so we're going to also, so we're going to subtract, so we've got the square, which is 3 plus 2 root 2, subtract the root 3 from the equilateral triangle, subtract the area of this, and the area of this is going to be a quarter, Uh, and four of those subtract four quarters to subtract one, which is going to get you two plus two root two. Take root three, which is that one there. Yeah. I think there's an easier way to do that. Funny that they gave two answers at a lesson zero. Uh, this one and this one. So that is lesson zero, and that is lesson... Oh, Laplace, you should have said that earlier. You can do it now. Once you know you're taking a root three off, it can't be that one, and it can't be that one. And if that's less than nothing, and that's less than nothing, it has to be B. We could have stopped when we got up to this point here by just looking at the answers. That's one of the downsides of me not looking at the answers too early. That was a lesson zero. Uh, to be honest, all the answers merged into one. I looked at them. Hi, Proqua. Thanks for the subscription. I did the same thing to calculate. So you did the same as me, yeah. And probably quicker than I did. The numbers x and y are such that 3x, 3 to the power x plus 3 to the power y plus 1 is 5 thirds, and 3 to the power x plus 1 plus 3 to the power y is 3 root 3. What is the value of 3 to the power x plus 3 to the power y? What is the value of theta? So, 
And to make it easier, I'm going to call this A. So we're going to say A is 3 to the X and B is 3 to the Y. And then you can rewrite this. So that's going to be A plus 3 to the Y times 3 equals 5 root 3. Because that becomes A plus 3B. It's going to be 3 times B. It's 5 root 3. And then separately, you can do something exactly the same with the other one. You're going to get 3A plus B is 3 root 3. And then you can multiply uh, this by 3. So times this by 3, you're going to get uh, 9A plus 3B equals 9 root 3. And then you sub subtract them. So you're going to get 8A equals 4 root 3. A equals root 3 over 2. And then you can sub that back in to one of the other equations. So if we substitute that back into, uh, we'll substitute back into this one. So we're going to say that when you sub back in, we're going to get 3a, so it's going to be 3 root 3 over 2 plus b equals 3 root 3. So you're going to get b is, b is 3 root 3, take 3 root 3 over 2, which is going to be 3 root 3 over 2. And our answer is saying, what is A plus B? We have A, we have B. So what are they added together? You're going to have 3 root 3 over 2 plus root 3 over 2. It's going to be 4 root 3 over 2 or 2 root 3. That was nice. That was nice. Now, the first step, you're realising that you, can, you want to break them into 3, three to the power y's and separately. Just makes it a bit easier. How many pairs of real numbers satisfy the simultaneous equations x squared minus y is 2022 and y squared minus x is 2022? Oh dear, right, well let's try adding them together and see what we're going to get. An x squared plus y squared, take x, take y is 4040. That's not going to help us. Because that only gives us one equation and it's not equal to zero. So what we can do instead of doing that is we could subtract them to start with. You're going to get an x squared, take y squared, add x, Take y is 0. And if we can factorise this, we can get some solutions. That's going to be x minus y, x plus y from completing the square. And then you're going to get another x minus y from this bit here. So from this bit here, you can factorise again. You can say that's x minus y, lots of x plus y, plus another one. So the solutions you get are x equals y, that doesn't seem right, or x is y minus 1, nope, minus y minus 1, and if we take those in, so we can substitute them back in, just have a little play, you're going to get an x squared take x, because they're the same, 2022, you're going to get x squared minus x minus 2022 is 0, and from there you're going to get two solutions. 
because that's a quadratic with two roots. And then separately, so that's subbing in one of them, and subbing in two of them, you can say uh, that you're going to get, uh, I'm going to rearrange this to make it y equals, so you can say that y equals minus x minus 1. So you can say that x squared minus, add x, add 1, is 2022 and then you're going to get an x squared plus an x minus 2021 is zero and that's going to get you two solutions so i think you're going to get four pairs of solutions you're going to get two values of x from here and because x equals y you're going to get two values of y and you're going to get two values of x from here, and I don't think it's a repeated root. Do I need to check? It's not a repeated root because the intercept is so low down. Oh, I wonder if we could graph this. We could graph, uh, maybe we could graph them and show how many intersections we've got. That will be another solution, actually. I think if I've got time, I might look at graphing this one, but I think it's for. If you graphed this, you get a quadratic, you get y equals x squared minus, you get a quadratic that looks like that, with that being at minus 2022. And if you graph this, you're going to get a quadratic that looks like that, I think. That's y squared minus x minus 2022 equals zero or some version of it and you're going to get two solutions where you yeah you're going to get a solution for each and those solutions lie on the line y equals x and those solutions lie on the line y equals minus x minus one. Oh, that's nice isn't it That's nice. So I think it's four. I think graphically we can show it's four and algebraically we've shown four as well. The square is inscribed inside a quadrant of a circle. Inscribed means uh, all four corners touch uh, the edge. The circle's a radius of 10. I might have to do this a bit bigger here. So the circle's a radius of 10. What is the area of the square? So if we had this a little bit larger, I think we're going to have to do a lot of lines on this one. Poorly drawn, there's our square. There's our a circle with a radius of 10. And we're trying to find the area of the square. So we need to work out this length here, call it x. And usually in these, the reason I've drawn it larger, usually in these, is that you often need to use the fact that this line here is also 10. And that line there is also x. So can we work out this line here? Because we know that angle there, that's going to be, because this is isosceles, that's going to be 45 plus 90, it's going to be 135, and that gets us an exact trig value not drawn to scale. What, this one here or the previous one? I assume you mean the previous one. Uh, yeah, I think I think this is love, absolutely lovely. This bit here where the solutions fall on the, the linear equations I've got as the solutions to this, to the, it's not even a simultaneous equation, just the solutions to the factorized form. I think it's lovely. Might be one of my favourite questions I've ever done on these. That's just gorgeous. And for that to be question 19, that's ridiculously hard for question 19. Although I imagine if you just if you just did solve that graphically without doing the algebra, if you just solved that graphically and you had one quadratic and you realise that the other quadratic, you're going to have to get the positive and negative roots, which is why you know you need to do that way that you might just be able to get full without doing any algebra. But the fact is, you know where the solutions lie. It's nice. 
So here, can we find out this red dot? So the red dot's going to be is going to be uh, x forty five. Oh, we can just use Pythagoras. So we'll call that y. We can say we're trying to get y in terms of x. We can say y squared plus y squared equals x squared. It's going to be root two x, is it? Root two over x. So we're going to get two y squared is x squared y squared is x squared over 2, or y is um, x over root 2, or 2x, uh, root 2x over 2, whichever way around you want to do it, that is how I've just rationalised it. So you've got this here, you've got root 2 over 2x, is that distance there. So we've got in this triangle here, we've got, we can just use the sine rule, and hope, not the sine rule, the cosine rule and we can work out what x is because 135 is an exact trig value so you can say that using the cosine rule in that triangle there you can say 10 squared is cosine of 135 minus oh I've forgotten the cosine rule uh, minus No, it's easy. yeah, I've got it wrong. <laughs> the cosine rule is a squared plus b squared minus half minus uh, 2ab cos t, is it? Oh, no, I've forgotten it. Uh, a, uh, a squared is x squared plus root 2 over 2x two squared minus 2bc cos a, isn't it? 2 times x squared x times root 2 over x uh, root 2 over 2x times cos 135. Blech. So we're going to get 10 squared is going to be x squared. Uh, this is going to be, if you square root 2 over 2, you're going to get a half squared minus 2. 2 of the root 2 cancels. You're going to get root 2 x squared and then times cos 135 is it's going to be negative it's going to be 45 it's going to be negative root 2 over 2 negative root 2 over 2 so this is going to be 10 squared or 100 equals 3 over 2 x squared plus root 2 minus, so that, this all tied together, you're going to get root 2 times, it's going to cancel out, you're just going to get plus x squared, so you're going to get 100 equals uh, 5 over 2 x squared, 5 over 2 x squared, or uh, 240 equals x squared, x squared is root 40, running out of space, and the area of the square is come on, pen, pen. the area of the square is x squared. Oh, we could have stopped here. So this is going to be our area. It's going to just be forty. Uh, apologies for all my crossing out there and forgetting the cosine rule briefly. Uh, I haven't used it in since I last did one of these challenges. All right, so we're on to the five toughies at the end, and uh, we have half an hour left. I'm, my guess is I'm going to run out of time, because I've just over half, I've got about 34 minutes left. So let's try and be fast. There's one question I've seen already, so I might be able to be fast at that. But the perimeter of the logo is created from two vertical straight edges, two small semicircles, and two large semicircles. Both of the straight edges and the diameters of the small semicircles. All right, so that's two, that's two, and our other semicircle must be this. So that must be a semicircle, because it says there's two semicircles. It says one has horizontal diameters, and so what we want, yeah, so one has horizontal diameter, the other one doesn't. So the, the distance there is going to be two root two. 
So if we want to work out the area of the shaded bit, we can just do the area of this bit twice, and the area of that bit is going to be 2 root 2 over 2 times squared pi, which is going to be uh, 8 over 4, 2 is going to be 2 pi. Oh, I'm, I, I'm going to do that again. I can tidy it up a bit. So the radius is just going to be root 2. And the area of the shade, just the semicircle, is going to be, so this is a large semicircle, it's going to be, the radius is going to be root 2. The area of the semicircle is going to be half of the radius squared times pi. And the reason it's the half there is coming from because it's half a circle. Uh, root 2 squared is 2. This is going to be pi. And then we need to work out the area of the triangle. And then we're going to, need to take off the white bit. So the triangle is going to be 2 times 2 over 2 or 2. And then the small semicircle is going to be a half times 1 squared times pi, or a half pi. So the area of just the top right half, because remember, we're just basically going to double our answer because it's got a rotational symmetry. The area of the top right half is going to be the large semicircle plus the triangle, subtract the white semicircle, which is going to be a half pi plus 2. And we want overall two of them. So we want pi plus 4. We want that one there. How many pairs of integers satisfy the equation? So this has to be positive, because you're square rooting, which means y can only be 1 or 0. I oh, know y could be negative. Uh, hmm. How many pairs of integers? How many pairs of integers? Well, uh, well, what if we initially square things? X plus 23 equals that squared, which is going to be 8 minus plus y squared minus 4 root 2 y. Um, hmm. so so because these are integers, y has to be an integer, which means that for these to be the same, that the third part has to equal the third part. So I think you can split it, you can effectively equate coefficients, you can get two equations out of this. You can have the uh, the non third part, you can say S, S, x has to equal 8 plus y squared. And separately you can say that negative root x plus 23 has to equal negative this, and we can write that as... Uh, 
Room 32Y. Oh, which has to be, if we write that as root 32y squared, you now have two equations here, the third pass to match. So x plus 23 has to equal 32y squared. And you can solve this. So you can say that 8, so we're going to substitute this into that one. So 8 plus y squared plus 23 equals 32y squared. And we can solve for y. So you're going to get a plus 23 is 32. So you're going to get y squared plus 31 equals 32 y squared. So y has to be 1. Um, am I missing a solution here? Oh, y could be negative 1 as well. We need y plus 31 to equal 32 y squared. It has to be 1, doesn't it? Oh, uh, let's do this properly. We can say that... Uh, 31 equals 32 y squared take y squared. So you can say 31 equals y squared 32 minus 1. So yeah, so 1 equals y squared and y is plus or minus 1. So if y is plus or minus 1, then x has to be 9. From this, why can't y be? Uh, okay, so why was our first guess at being one? But what, there's no way that if x is nine, that y can be both plus and minus one. So one of them won't work. I think you're going to get one solution. You're going to get x is nine. So if x is 9, 9 plus 30, 23 is 32. Square root of 32, do we have to work it out? Let's, let's work it out. We've got 9 minus root 32 is 2 root 2 minus y. 9 minus root 32 is the same as 9 minus 4 root 2 rooted is 2 root 2 minus y. It can't be both. Why have we got an extra solution? Is it because we squared initially? If we squared initially, does that give us another solution? Because initially y wasn't squared, so... But then we get a y squared. I'm going to come back to that. I think it's 1, and I think 1 of positive and negative 1 doesn't work, and I don't know which one it is. But I don't need to know which one it is. I just need to know how many solutions are. I'm going to guess that, and I might be wrong. I think I'm reasonably confident it's 1. I'm reasonably confident it's not anything else. Right, so this is the one I've seen. One of my students asked me about this when he came out of the test. We've got two solutions because this... Uh, okay. Uh, oh, we squared... Yeah, so basically we've got two solutions because we squared at one point. That's what the past says. We created an extra solution for y because we didn't square x. Because we've only got one solution for x, we've got two for y. Right, so I'm going to speed through this one because I've, I've talked through this as a pupil who wanted to check his answer was right. So if you're watching this, Luke, uh, well done. Because I'm pretty sure you got it right because I had a little play about this with paper. So we've got some squares that land on the triangles here. The squares of areas of 10, 90 and 40. So the, the areas of the, the length of them is going to be root 10, 3 root 10 and 2 root 10. So basically, you're just going to get a lot of similar triangles. That's going to be 2 root 10. That's going to be 3 root 10. That's going to be root 10. That's going to be 2 root 10. That's going to be 2 root 10. And so on. And you can, what you can do is work out the uh, triangles here. Now, <clears throat> this is going to be 
Pythagoras. So this triangle here is going to be Pythagoras. It's going to be root 2 root 10 squared times root 10 squared plus root 10 squared. It's going to be root 50 or 5 root 2. And the triangles are similar. This triangle is similar to the GFP triangle. I wish I'd have zoomed. I should have probably made a bigger picture of this. But the GFP triangle is going to be similar. It's going to have a scale factor of a half, 5 root 5 over 2 root 2. And then similarly on the other side, you've got 2 root 10. So that's going to be 5 root 2. And you'll notice that this triangle and this triangle are the same. And because the angles are the same, so the angles in this one and this one are the same because of the, the share side, um, and this is 90 degrees, so whatever that is is the same as that, and so on. These two triangles are the same. You've got a scale factor thing here, so you're going to have, if that's 2 root 10 and that's root 10, they're going to be twice as large, so it's going to be 10 root 2. And then what you do is you go up to this triangle at the top here, and whatever this angle is here is the same as this one. And is the same as that one because we know that this triangle is the same as the JKR triangle. So there's lots of similarity here. And so that angle there is the same as this angle here, which is the same as this angle here, which is the same as this angle here. So all the triangles are the same. So the advantage of that is we know this is a right angle triangle. So if we can work out the missing sides I and J and I and H by using similarity, and this is where I need to deviate, the scale factor is uh, 3 root 10 over 5 root 2, which is the hypotenuse of IJH divided by the hypotenuse of HGQ. So I'm just highlighting where I'm getting that similarity from, that, that hypotenuse and that hypotenuse uh, two right angle triangles and they're similar. So that's the scale factor which can simplify to 3 root 5 over 5. So what we're going to do now is just scale things up. We know that this length is root 10 which is the same as that length scale factored up. So we're going to say 3 root 5 over 5 times root 10 is that answer there which is going to be 3 root 50 over 5, which is going to be uh, 3 root 50 over 5 is going to be 5 root 2, and I'll cancel, it's going to be 3 root 2. Uh, I'll just do that again. Three, no, three root fifty, and root fifty is five root two, and the prize will cancel, so you're just going to get three root two. So that's going to be three root two. And then this one here, you can do the same uh, by doing similarity with two root ten. So you can say three root five over five times two root ten is going to be six root two. It's going to be twice as large, isn't it? Six root two. And then we're just going to do area of a triangle with all our sides and edges. So the area of the triangle is going to be 3 root 2 plus 5 root 2 plus 5 over 2 root 2 times i to l, which is going to be 6 root 2 plus 5 root 2 plus 10 root 2 divided by 2 because it's an over triangle. Alright, so you're basically going to get 10 and a half, so right, 8, 10 and a half root 2 times 11, 21 root 2 divided by 2, and then the 2 is going to cancel out with the 2 root 2, so you're going to get 10.5 times 21 is 200. I've missed something. 220.5, that's right. 220.5. So you're going to get a 0.5 in your answer. So, chatted with Luke. Luke said, I think I got this. I sat down with some pen and paper. I realised I got very close to this and made an error and then I found out what my error was. I did that while they were doing an exam or a test, so 
Uh, I'd already seen the answer to that one, so hopefully that made sense. Uh, but it gives me 15 minutes to have a go at this. No, come back to that one. Oh my god, now I'll have a look. So we'll read it. The numbers x, y, p and q are all integers and x and y are variable and p and q are constant and positive. Four integers are related by the equation. Oh dear. All right, so p and q are just constants and x and y are variables. So this is a graph where p and q are constants and you've got x and y appearing twice on an equation or a graph. So when y takes its maximum possible value, which expression is equal to y minus x? So when I see this, I think differentiation, and usually they don't expect you to do that because it is A level. So apologies for anyone watching it. I'm going to try and differentiate it. So the first step is to rearrange it. So we can say x, y minus q, y equals p, x. And we can say y equals p, x over x minus q. Ugh. So we have to use the quotient rule. That won't have a maximum because that is going to have an asymptote. This graph looks like uh, if that's Q, I'll well, make Q positive just to keep easy. If that's Q, there's going to be an asymptote here. It's going to be a value of X, which Q doesn't work. And when X is larger than Q, you're going to get a graph that looks like that. When X is smaller than Q, you're going to have a graph that looks like that. I'm filming for YouTube, Smashy. So troll it with, uh, troll it with care. So there isn't a maximum. In fact, the maximum y is going to be somewhere up here, very far up there. What am I missing in the press? They're all integer. They're all integer. So why is max? Oh, oh, yeah. So we're going to go back to this statement here. Well spotted. He is good at maths. X, what? They're all integers. So x can't be very close to q. In fact, the largest x can be is x. Is is q plus one? So when x is q plus one, that is the highest y can get. There'll be an integer when x is q plus 1, for certain values of q maybe. So, when y takes its maximum possible value, x is q plus 1. So, So we're, uh, so we're just going to substitute in, so we're going to say y equals p q plus 1 over, q plus 1 times q is 1, so y equals p q plus 1, but what we want is this, so we can say y take x equals p Q plus one uh, take Q plus one. So it's going to be Y minus X equals P plus one lots of Q plus one, which is this one here. All right, I want to give credit to LaFrasse, so I'm not sure I would have spotted that in time. We have 10 minutes left. This is 
This is tough. This is one of the toughest ones I've ever done, I think. Oh, hang on. Yeah, thank you. Good spot. I would have got that wrong. That's P minus one because we're taking this away. Taking that away, aren't we? So it's going to be... All right, again. So I've got it right. Circle the wrong answer. In the real test, that would be wrong. So I'm going to give credit to chat here. He's helped me at least twice now. So it's going to be D here. A drinks Carlton is formed by arranging. I looked at this and I did have a starting point, but I, well, I say starting point to some extent. A drinks Carlton is formed by arranging four congruent triangles. So all the triangles are four by 10 by 10. What is the volume in centimeters cubed of the Carlton? So the volume of a shape like that, if it's got a singular point above a base, is, uh, is a third of base times height. Is going to be a third times the the area of the base times the height. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to work out the area of the base, and the base has a shape that looks like this. And then we're going to try and find the height, which might be the hard bit. So that's going to be two ten. And the height's going to be uh, 2 squared plus 10 squared is uh, 104. Let me see. 2 squared plus 10 squared is 104. Square root of 104 is root 104. Why am I doing that for? I think it's absolutely stupid. I just want the area of this, don't I? Oh, I do need the height. I do need the height. Oh, dear. Yeah, so the area of this is going to be base times perpendicular height. So it's going to need the height, which is going to be root 104. And then the whole base is 4. And so the area of this is going to be... Is going to be 4 times root 104 over 2, which is going to be 2 times root 104, which is going to be. Oh, no, it's not 104, is it? It's 96. Uh, not root 96, because it's not the hypotenuse. Root 96, which is going to change that to a 96. I'm rushing here because I've only got uh, just under 10 minutes left. So root 96, root 96, root 96 is 4 root 23s, which is going to be 8 root 23. And the good news is that two of my answers have got root 23. So my final guess is going to be that or that, I think. If I was going to guess, I'd be a guessing man. I would be guessing one of these two because I've got root 23 and it's very difficult, very difficult for root 23 to cancel down. At a later point. So we've got the area of the base, we've got a third, we need the height. So the height is going to be this line here. 23 times 4 is 92. There's me looking at the answers. Oh, no, it is 26. Thank you, Lepras. 96. Oh dear, it's not 23. It's uh, 96 is 6 root 16, it's not 4 root 23, it's 6 root 16, so it's going to be, uh, root 16 is 8, uh, it's just going to, uh, root, uh, root 16 is 4, it's going to be 8 root 6. And 4 root 23s, yeah, ignore me, ignore me, it's all gone wrong, I'm rushing. I saw the root 23 in the answer thinking, brilliant, I've got a 23, makes it easier, but it's not. We've got root 60, so my guess is now going to be, my guess is going to be one of these two, if I was going to guess, if I was guessing now. We need to find the height now, and the height lies over the centre of that line there. So we, the height is going to be, well, that's 4. The height is what we're after, we'll call it H, and to work out the height...
I'm, I think I need to work out this angle here, let's call it uh, theta. Alright, so to work out that height, I don't think there's any way I can realistically work out the base, you see. I just don't know where, at what point R hovers over the, the, the base. There's an, uh, there's an angle of elevation, I don't think that helps me. Oh, what we do, ah, we, ooh, ah. We do know We do know that length, don't we? That's 10. So what we have is a thin triangle here. Where the base is root 96, which we know is 4 root 16. And that's 10. So we can say theta is ten sine sine theta is ten over four root sixteen. So I know you've just said something in the past, but I think I've got it now. We can now say h is 4 sine theta. So we can say, different pen now, we can say h is 4 sine theta using just basically trigonometry. And we know sine theta is this. So we could say h is 4 times sine theta, and sine theta is 10 over 4 root 16. So we can say height is 4 times that, which is going to be 10 over root 16. Oh, it's not. It's not 4 root 16. It's 4 root 6. Thank you. Thank you. I've, it's, I've been going for an hour making errors. Chat, you deserve some points. It's going to be 4 root 6. Root 6. Stephen Start, 90, uh, 192. You've been very helpful. Thank you very much. Uh, so we've got the height. So we can now work out the uh, volume. So we can say the volume is going to be a third times 8 root 6 times 10 over root 6. I'm not going to get a third of my answer here. What have I done wrong? I've done something wrong because I think I'm going to get 8 root 6 the, the six, root 6 is going to cancel out. I'm going to get a third of 80, which is going to be uh, 80 over 3. I've done something wrong here. What have I done? The length is not 10. This length here. Oh, it's... Isn't it? What is it? From the midpoint of RS to the midpoint of Q, what is it? I thought it was 10. It's not... Is it not 10? I'm going to run out of time here. I'm going to run out of time. Uh, so what my chat is saying is that this 10 is wrong. And it might, yes, I think it is wrong, isn't it?
if we let h be the midpoint of QP, oh, so you're saying. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, all right. So we're going to go back. So I don't know at what point I've gone wrong. I think I've gone wrong again. I, I think I'm going to get an answer. So what time are we on? I, right, I'm going to go over, but I think the chat has helped us get an answer. And for those of you who actually got an answer to this, we might. So I think, uh, I think, I think that is right so far. So I'm going to rub off some stuff. So we're going to rub off that and redo this bit. All right, so Laprasse is saying, he is saying that we could work out this length here, R2, we'll call it big X. And we know that, we know that this length here is Oh, got it. And then we can use that to work out that. <laughs> Pen, paper. You've already got two arrows out there, Stephen. So we know this triangle here. That's for that the base is going to be uh, root 96. And that's going to be root 96. So that this length here. Uh, is going to be 96. And that's going to be root 92. That's going to be theta. So we can say theta, sine theta is root 92 over root 96, which is going to be, uh, so we're still trying to work out theta, but we're using Laplace's method. And once we've got theta, we know we can do h again, little h. So sine, 32, sine theta is root 92, which is, oh, we are going to get 23. Root 92 is 4 root 23. Or 2 root 23, it's 423, and root 96 we know is 4 root 6. So sine theta is that awful, the root 6s are going to cancel out, it is going to be A or D. So we can say that the height is going to be 4 sine theta, which is going to be 4 times this, which is going to be 2 root 23, uh, 23 over root 6. And so the volume, oh, this is awful, volume. So we've gone over, we have lost time, we have taken just over an hour and a half, so we're not going to get full marks. The volume is a third times the base times uh, the height. Now the height is 2 root 23 over root 6. So we're going to get a third times 8 times 2, the root 6 is going to cancel out, you're going to get 16 thirds of root 23, which I think is A. Oh my god, that was difficult. That was difficult. I think for a math challenge where I've actually attempted all questions, that is the hardest one I've ever done. Sometimes I get to a question I can't do, so in theory that's probably harder, but without chat, Without chat, so I have Tim's answers somewhere. He sent me them. So if I Tim, 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 Tim Lister. So if you're watching this at a later date, Tim, thanks for the answers. You've got. Oh, hang on, where's he gone? You did give me some answers. Okay, there's some answers, and then you changed your mind on one, didn't you? 
do you think that one is D? Right, okay, so we're going to go and get some answers. We're going to go back and we're going to mark it. And I'm only going to mark it definitely right if Tim and I agree. If we don't agree, I will do it with a pinch of salt. So we don't have answers. Uh, this is a caveat for you guys here. So Tim and I are going to uh, mark ours. So we both said, so question one, we both said D. So we'll say that's right. Question two, we, uh, he said C, I said A. Why is what I've said wrong? 8, 15, 25, 26, 36, 39. So I think I'm right there because I've got something that works. So Tim said C, so bear in mind, C could be right, but I think I'm right with A there. Uh, Tim said D, I said C. So we disagree on that one. 39 is not a prime. Okay, I get it wrong. So we're going to trust Tim there. 39 is not a prime. Where were you when I did this question in the press? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and so then you can't do 15, so you have to do 17, and that gets you 43. All right, so Tim's got it right. Here, I said C, he said D. Where on earth can you get more parallelograms from? You were sleeping. So here, he thinks you can get two more parallelograms than me. I just think every parallelogram is just a pair of these, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think you can add any other triangles together and get a parallelogram. Uh, this is not a parallelogram. Yeah, so I think I'm right there. But anyway, I, I'm going to go with C. But I, again, we differ there, so that was the deal. Question four. Maybe I'm reading his answers out wrong, because this is definitely right, isn't it? He's got he's got C, I've got D. Apologies. This is usually more efficient. I think I'm reading... I think he's got his answers wrong. So he said D, C, D, C, D, and he's gone D, C, C... D, C. So I think he's typed his out wrong. So I think that's definitely right as well. We both said E. So I think he just typed it wrong. We both said C. We both said E. We both said B. We both said D. We both said A. We... He said C, I've said E. So I think I'm right there. The press got the same answer as me, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, we both said C. I didn't like my method to that. Uh, we both said A. We both said B. Now onto the tough ones. So these are the last 10 where he spent an hour on the last so many. Uh, we both said B. We both said B. Change to a green pen. We both said B. We both said E. That, one of my favourite questions I've ever done, I think that was lovely. Uh, we both said D. And then on the last five questions, we both said D. We both said B. We both said A. We both said, no, he said C. Have I written that wrong? All right, so it's one of these two. The press was watching me, so I'm, I'm liable to think my answer's right. Maybe he's just circled the wrong one. Um, but bear in mind that this is a very difficult question. I'm not sure my method works. And we differ here. So it's either C or D, says Tim and I. And we both said A. So a final answer then. So I, it's very difficult for me to gauge what I'd score here. I definitely got, so let's have a quick look. What do we definitely get wrong? So there's some differences. So I got this one wrong. I definitely got this one wrong. That was a mistake from me. What do we think of this one, guys? Do we think this is six? I can't see more than six. Can anyone see more than six parallelograms?
anyone? All right, I'm going to trust I'm right there, but I might be wrong. Was the rage of the area? Yeah, I think he's just missed. I think Tim's just missed to take this off here. So I think that's wrong. Yeah, so Lapas and I are going to go with six. Uh, I think Tim's missed to take this off. There's no way it can be 8 to 25 because that's the ratio of the whole shapes. The large square to the small one. Or at least half the large square. Uh, okay, we've got that right, we've got that right, that right, that right, that right, that right. All right. Uh, we differed here, but I think Lepras and I agreed on this, so I think I don't know how you get 45. Um, all right, so we've definitely got one wrong, and then some dubious ones, and then we get we differed on this one. So I'm going to suggest that chat help me with this one. So I'm going to count that as one I got wrong. And I'm going to suggest I ran out of time. So I'm going to suggest I got three wrong. So my score, I started with 25 marks. I answered, uh, I definitely answered 22 correct. I got two wrong. Uh, and then the last one I had time, so I'll get zero for the last one. So 25, 113, 111 out of 125. Given how difficult that was, I think that was pretty good. So if you've had a go at this, uh, which question did you like? Do you disagree with any of my answers? Bear in mind, I have not got the answers with me. My list of answers has come from my checking with a friend called Tim and Lepras keeping me in check on the stream. So yeah, made one stupid mistake, got help from chat with two questions at the end there and ran out of time. So uh, if you managed to get them all right in a half, an hour and a half, I think you've done incredibly well. Um, but anyway, yeah, this has been uh, this has been the Maths Challenge 2022 senior one. Uh, I think this question is beautiful. So if you want to take anything away from that, have a look at this one again. But I've been Steve. I'll tune in for the next one, which I think is the intermediate one in January or February or sometime. Um, and then uh, at certain points, I'll go back and do the ones historically. I've got them all the way back to 1997, I think. So uh, I will see you too. Uh, farewell.